by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. An ex-con candidate for the U.S. Senate who sold himself as Trumpier than Trump could not pull off a victory in a much-watched West Virginia primary. I'm Laura Podesta with a wrap-up of yesterday's key races. And we'll also wrap up some election results from school board and mill levy elections around southwest Montana from yesterday as well. Good morning to you. Rapidly approaching the 630 moment, the candidate for the U.S. Senate who sold himself as Trumpier than Trump could not pull off that victory in the much-watched West Virginia primary. It was one of many races nationwide that sets the stage for a dramatic midterm election this fall. CBS's Laura Podesta has more. West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey will be the Republican who tries to unseat Democratic Senator Joe Manchin this fall. And Morrissey gave most of the credit to one man. Mr. President, if you're watching right now, let me tell you, your tweet was huge. That tweet from President Trump sent out the day before the GOP primary warned voters candidate Don Blankenship can't win the general election. West Virginia voters listened and Blankenship, an ex-convict and coal baron who called himself Trumpier than Trump, finished a distant third. Uh, we ran against the establishment and the establishment is not going to give up their position very easily. In Ohio, U.S. Representative Jim Renacci won the chance to challenge Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown, thanks in part to support from President Trump. In Indiana, Vice President Mike Pence's oldest brother, Greg, won the GOP congressional primary for Indiana's 6th District. Tonight is the start of the next phase of our fight to help President Trump. Tuesday night's wins could help avert a potential political disaster for the GOP, which has been bracing for major losses in the fall midterm. Republicans got the candidates they wanted in these races where they need effective candidates to take on these Democratic incumbents. Control of Congress is at stake. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Also in the Democratic primary for Ohio governor's race, President Obama's consumer watchdog Richard, Richard Cordray bested former Congressman Dennis Kucinich. Uh, Cordray will take on another Republican contender, Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine. So more to follow. Part one, done. Uh. <laughs> Ours is coming up in June. Part two, yeah, no, that's how it is. A little, little, uh, little while longer. Absolutely yep. true. No <laughs> doubt about it. Mr. Matt, I know we were anticipating some thunderstorms this afternoon, but you said enjoy it while we have it. Yeah, and there are a few showers uh, west of the divide this morning, but I think it's going to be on the lighter side. It's the afternoon that we're going to be paying attention to the skies. Daytime highs likely to warm up pretty quickly uh, into the 70s or pretty close to that. Right now we're into the 40s. Clouds are trying to roll in. I can't rule out a few isolated showers for the morning, but the better potential coming later in the day. We're going to talk about that uh, fairly significant cool down by the end of the week. And that's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Now 632 and election results are in. Voters were asked to pass a number of measures impacting schools and fire departments. First results we're going to take a look at this morning is the Bozeman School District. District hopes to use existing funds to purchase 10 acres of land on Baxter Lane. 76 percent of voters said yes to that purchase. The district was also asking voters to support an effort to purchase land near Four Corners in the Woodland Park development. 76% of voters also gave the green light for that purchase. And we're also asking for voters to support a mill levy to support elementary school operations. 67% have voted in favor so far. And a separate mill would support high school operations. This also appears to be passing with 66% of the vote going yes. Also on the ballot, a school board vote. Four people running for three seats. Uh, looks like the incumbents are going to retain their seats. Douglas Fisher with 29% of the vote. Gary Lucen, 30% of the vote. Gary McGowan received 9%. Wendy uh, Tage with 32% of the votes in that one. Also seven candidates vying for two open seats on the Belgrade School Board. Mary Ellen Fitzgerald well, with 20% of the vote. Tom Stock with 18. Again, these are early numbers in that. Uh, we will update all of the results coming up on our website, kbzkkxlf.com.
That school board also, Central Valley a Fire asking voters to pass a levy. It would raise taxes by $10 a year for 15 years uh, for every $100,000 of taxable value. 63% of the voters in this one approving that. Again, a preliminary numbers, a complete re election results on our website, kbzkkxlf.com. Thank you, Chad. And the Missoula County Sheriff's Department Tuesday issued mandatory evacuation orders because of the threat of flooding. MTN's Joe Valley reports on how the residents there are coming together in a time of crisis. Dozens of high school freshmen from Big Sky High School spent part of the day Tuesday filling sandbags to help block the rising waters of the Clark Fork River. It's hot and dirty work, but they know it's important because this is happening in their own neighborhoods. All these people are having a hard time living in their own houses right now, and it's in our own community. So especially seeing like drone images of people having a hard time in their own homes, it's definitely something to work for. Coincidentally, this volunteer effort is an extension of what they've been learning in the classroom this year about the power behind the snowpack. One of the things we've been doing is studying the um, relationship between uh, the snowpack, the winter snowpack and the rivers. We've been telling these students like this is going to be historic. And so as soon as we noticed that things were homeowners were being affected here, we said, oh, my gosh, this is their this is their neighborhood school. So we said, yeah, we should get these guys out and help. And they've been amazing. They, these guys have been absolutely incredible. I think they feel a sense of accomplishment, a sense of pride in what they're doing. Um, I had some students yesterday who said this was the best thing they've done because they felt like it was really meaningful to them. They felt like they'd actually accomplished something. It's interesting to like see it in real life instead of it just being like taught in a classroom. Yeah, it's good like learning how to do it for the experience you can have. It's one of many efforts to help Missoula area flood victims. Nathan Stevens started a Facebook page called Missoula Flood Support so people can connect in this crisis. Came out of a sense to want to help in some way and uh, I have a lot of experience doing online marketing and doing a lot of Facebook pages. Yeah, I mean, it's really a way to crowdsource. The Facebook page Missoula Flood Support is connecting those people who need help to those who want to give help. And as this flood situation continues, that aid will stretch beyond the borders of Missoula. Yeah, and they're asking for support in Bonner and Clinton and East Missoula now as well. So they're seeing the, the water rising in those areas and they're concerned and, um, you know, they, they want to plan ahead. So I think they're uh, I think people are ahead of the county in a way by paying attention to what's going on at the river and realizing that the warm weather's here and the melt's coming soon. In Missoula, Jill Valley, MTN News. Now, Jill tells us 55 homes were a part of yesterday's evacuation order. Shifting gears just a bit, more than 100 high school students had the opportunity to yesterday to check out some of the latest technology in the manufacturing industry. Gallatin College MSU hosted Manufacturing Day. Students from Gallatin and Park Counties visited the East Campus Manufacturing Labs. From business operations to design drafting, the students participated in several hands-on activities throughout the day, learning about some of the behind-the-scenes action of manufacturing. Program Development Manager at Gallatin College, Stephanie Gray, says that she hopes the program can expose students to an industry that's booming here in the Treasure State. We all need things and parts to be made for us to live in our daily lives and I, I think it's important for us to do that in our own communities and to, the, to do that in our country and we need to help support employers who are doing that. We're told the students rounded out the day by visiting some local manufacturing companies in the Bozeman area. And Butte Police are taking donations and getting ready to run in support of Montana Special Olympics. Officers were on Harrison Avenue yesterday receiving donations for, from passing motorists for the Special Olympics that begins next week in Great Falls. Officers and volunteers will also be participating in the torch run between Whitehall and Butte. That will be happening today. It goes to the Special Olympics. It goes to... Uh helps pay the cost for the athletes to go to the state games, to participate in local games, whatever, the, wherever the money's needed. And Opening ceremonies will be held on May 16th in Great Falls. Great times. Always love it. Love that. It is time for a quick break. Coming up, Governor Steve Bullock's tour of some of the areas hit hardest by the flooding in the Helena Valley. But first, let's check in with Gail King to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, we'll talk with National Security Advisor John Bolton about the president's decision to pull out of the Iran deal and the fallout from that move. And this Asian elephant, he doesn't need a dating app, how the National Zoo is helping Spike look for love in an effort to save the endangered species. Yep, elephants need love too. See you 7 o'clock on the dot.